Hey guys, I am going to show you a really cool way that you can use a network session MIDI network to use things like this Akai LPD8 to send MIDI through Ableton Live to the version 1.2 of Filtertron. I love Filtertron. I've been using it for a while, even though it didn't have these features. And it's really cool because I actually emailed Moog many months ago and asked like, oh, it'd be really cool if we could have MIDI CC mappable um, parameters so that way we could use it with our um, DAWs and I got a response back and but I never actually thought they would actually listen and do it so it's pretty awesome so the first thing we need to do on the phone is go into our settings turn off or turn on Y or sorry turn on the airplane mode go to Wi-Fi and now once Wi-Fi is set on our computer we need to sorry this is kind of hard to see. There we go. We need to turn it on. I have it off just for this example. Once it's on, I'm going to create a network. And this happens to be the name of my computer, Gonzo. Once it's connected and created, this will change into waves. And it will be gray with a computer on the inside. That's a good thing. Now that this is setting, sending out a private computer to, 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 blah, blah, computer, to computer network, it will now be recognized in here. And here it is on the top of the list, Gonzo. When I click on it, it's going to take a couple of seconds for it to populate in these fields. So I'm just going to leave this. I'm not worried about it right now. The next thing I'm going to do on the computer is I'm going to go into audio MIDI setup. Now that I'm choosing this, it automatically comes up for MIDI window. But if you don't see it, you need to go to window and click show MIDI window. Once it's open, choose network, and you'll see that Kuroneko, my phone, right here, since it's connected now, see this is populated. Now that this is connected, I can sync it up. And now these two are working on the same network. You need to make sure this is showing your phone or whatever device name, and latency doesn't really matter. This doesn't matter. This doesn't matter either. So now that this is finished, I'm going to open up Ableton, and I'm going to go to my settings. Now that you're in your settings, you need to make sure that your network input, sorry, input MIDI port for network session one that I created, everything's off. You don't need it. What you need is on the output network session one track on. You need this to be on. Now, whatever device you're going to use, you want to make sure that it's track is set to on and remote is set to on. And I'm using my LPD8. So the other thing is if you use your LPD8 or whatever as a control surface, you want to turn it off because the the blue hand that automatically maps things for you um, will interfere with the CCs that were that will be sent. Create a MIDI track, choose your device, and um, set it to in. It's just easier that way. And for the output, choose that network session that you created. Now, when you turn something on your knob, well, you when you turn a knob, sorry, um, it's going to show a responsive yellow dot here and it will also show something up top too in the top right corner okay the next thing you need to do is go back to your device go back to filtertron and now in the about section you're going to see a new box up here that says midi now that it's open you're going to notice something kind of strange it says off at least for me it says off and there's nothing here it might say something for you and that's great but i know that i have a computer to computer network so it will work a uh, channel one is fine um, you could also leave it set to Omni as in all 16 channels it doesn't matter to me but if you're using lots of different MIDI devices then you want to set a specific number but I don't I just want to leave it set to one or I mean Omni just so that everything catches the next thing you do is you click this little learn button and you need to choose parameter that you want to map. So let's do the VCO. And I'm going to choose this one. And I've mapped these numerically. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So I'm going to turn this one. And you notice that as I turn it, I can't do it at the same time. I don't have three hands. But it now says 5. And if I change to a different knob, number 8, it shows a different number. Now also notice that the number is off by 1. I'm turning 4 right now, and it says 5. I'm turning eight and it says nine. This is something that's strange about the app and I don't quite understand it, but I don't care because it works anyway. One of those kind of deals. So 
the next thing you want to do, um, just to test it out, and I'll just show you, but I'm going to map uh, the frequency to this knob, and I'm going to have level B to this knob just for fun. Now that these are set, I'm going to close this, go back here, and go to my VCO. And now when I start turning knobs, I get sound. all via a private Wi-Fi network from computer to computer. So here's my pitch frequency, and here's my volume. Really fun. I mean, you can see the possibilities just open up like mad. Do a lot of really great stuff. Now, I'm going to show you something else that's really awesome about this fact is that I have this set up with MIDI, right? And it's set up to in, but if I turn it to auto, now I can record automation and it will be transmitted. So I'm gonna turn on my metronome and try to do something somewhat rhythmically. What was my, okay. All right, so there we go. Something like that. <clears throat> so I'll leave it low, leave the volume up, here we go. Okay, so I have a little two-bar phrase. And nothing shows up here because there's no notes. You have to choose this little envelope window to pop up. And once it does, see MIDI control now has these parameters checked. So now I have this. And notice it says 8 and 4. There's extra stuff. I don't know why there is, but there is. So now when I press play, I'm not turning anything. It's all automated now. And I can see that automation because remember it's number four. And there it is. So, yeah, it's pretty awesome. And it gets better. If you have Max for Life, you are in for a world of fun. I have Max open over here. You notice it's been open. And I have LFO MIDI. It's part of the standard suite. Okay. When you open this up, what this allows you to do is send MIDI information via controlled by an LFO low frequency oscillator. And now it's going to be sent to a CC. I'm going to choose CC4. Bam. Isn't that sick? Now, I'm also going to add another one. I'm gonna open it up, and this time I'm gonna set this one to, let's do the frequency, uh, let's do the res, so the resonance of <clears throat> the filter. So we'll do filter res, and we'll do the filter frequency. So we wanna find VCF cutoff, and that's our filter amount. And now I have it set, aha, see this? This is fun, one five, one five. Okay, this is happening because these two guys are on. If I turn these off, now it's not sending any MIDI information out and this number is now not going all crazy psycho on me. So I'm gonna choose this. I'm gonna choose two different knobs, six and seven, which are really five and six, but it's okay. And now I'm gonna, now I'm going to choose, I'm gonna actually duplicate this. So this one will be filter. This one will be res. Okay. Now that this is set, I need to make sure I get the right buttons. So I have this filter set for five and I have the resonance set for six on my LPD eight. All right, I don't know what's happening here with that. It looks very strange. But anyway, 
now when I turn on the device and I start playing, oh, that's why. Ha, ha, ha. See, it's still going. I'm making a video and making mistakes here for you guys. That's what I'm doing. The reason this is happening is because this is on. It's sending these changes. So I need to make sure that I make my maps, my mappings correct and get them set. So cutoff is going to be five. This is going to be six, even though the numbers are different. Now I have to close it. So now it's not going to do any different changes on me. So now when I... Now that I have these guys, oh. I lost. I lost my there it is. Frequency, that's what I lost. There we go. Close. Go back. Now I'm going to turn this back on. There we go. Then we got a filter. And now I'm going to turn on my control out. Cool. I don't know what's happening here with this guy, so I'll just turn it off and just mess with the rest of myself. Okay. The other thing about this, I have to turn this off. The other fun thing about Filtertron is most of you know who have used it. There's not just a VCO, you also have a line input, which is why I have this set up. And I also, there's also a built-in sampler. And these are fun too because with the same mini maps, let's go back and I'm going to turn this learn button on. I'm not sending anything to make sure I'm not sending. Okay. So I'm going to choose different things for levels now. For VCO level, I want to choose buttons instead. So that's the VCOs on the far right. And then the... Where is it? Line level is far left. Oops. There we go, 14. I didn't have it set to CC. All right, so that means I need to go back up here. Level. Set to 16. And then sampler level, the middle one. Now I have these and I can kind of chop it up if I want to. I'm going to choose a sample that I like. Doesn't Sure, disco. So I'm going to make sure my filter is up. So I had to reset some stuff, but basically now it's set. So when I press this middle button, it's going to only let me hear that. Okay, I can't hear it so well. The volume's not so loud for me, so I'm not sure. But I can also do a line in. The line in option, unfortunately, there's a lot of interference from the um, wireless connection. So it really doesn't sound great. And I did a test here of my voice. All right, this is just a recording to make sure if it works. Hold it up. That was me making an awesome recording. So um, with this recording, you're going to use the line in option. I'm going to go back and turn in, turn up line in all the way. So now I have line in coming in, and I'll add some effects so that way you can kind of hear the, the fact that this is actually working. I'm using an envelope. Turn this down a little bit. Mix this all the way up. OK. So you need to use an external audio effect to hear these effects. So external audio effect is here, have it on. I have my routing set up for me. And now when I press play, All right, this is just a recording to make sure if it works. I'll pick up. Now that I have this, this is just a recording to make sure it works. I'll pick up. All right, this is just a recording to make sure it Sorry about that. It's really a weak signal. I mean, that is cranked up. That's like 24 dB. So unfortunately, for doing line in, it's not so great. But you could also just record stuff and throw it in the sampler and play with it that way too. So I hope you guys 
uh, are not completely lost on this. If you have questions, I'll try to answer. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this. And um, yay, finally, Filtertron version 1.2 MIDI support. Yeah, yeah.